All right, the president of Iran, Ibrahim Rossi, is issuing an ominous warning to the United States and Israel over the weekend. In a statement, he warned, quote, Zionist regime's crimes have crossed the red lines, which may force everyone to take action. Washington asks us not to do anything, but they keep giving widespread support to Israel. Here with his reaction is the exiled crown prince of Iran, His Royal Highness Reza Pahlavi. Reza, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay. Uh, what is Iran doing? Uh, the red line, what are they talking about? I mean, they're bombing... A, their proxy forces are shooting at our guys over in that region every day, it seems. That's exactly the case. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, the attitude of this regime has been repression at home and aggression abroad, using obviously its proxies, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas uh, in uh, Gaza. Uh, that's how far uh, the regime is uh, apart from where the Iranian people are. The most uh, heard slogan on Iranian street has been, neither Gaza, neither Lebanon, my life is sacrificed for Iran. What does that mean? That means the Iranian people know very well that what today the regime represents and calls for has nothing to do with their aspiration. The regime, on the other hand, is trying to push the envelope, trying to see whether they can take advantage of a weakness, which currently seems to be the case, and that's why they become emboldened every time uh, the West hesitates or doesn't apply the necessary pressure as it should have to at least contain this. But ultimately, with the idea of putting an end to the problem by eliminating the regime once and for all. Otherwise, it would be just kicking the can down the road. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're doing right now. But our, our president has been very clear. He has said, don't. That's, that's all he said is don't. Shouldn't he say don't or, you, or there's going to be hell to pay? Look, I mean, uh, words are words, but action determine the outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you have a situation where you have to uh, encourage the regime that if you take hostages, you will be rewarded and get some more cash in your hands. You have called for sanctions, but you have ne never implemented right. them, like the old sanctions. That is not what I call putting pressure. So. You know, be good boys and don't harm us. Is that the message? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Reza, what does the pressure look like? Uh, help the people of the State Department. Uh, they need some ideas. Look, I mean, uh, there, is a, there has been uh, a strategy of maximum support. And right. as I say, if it's actually implemented, and by the way, if your European allies were to also target and designate the IRGC as a terrorist organization, that's additional pressure on the regime and will curtail their efforts even further. But parallel to maximum pressure, there ought to be also a campaign of maximum support. That means empowerment of the Iranian people to put domestic pressure to force the regime ultimately to paralysis and collapse. That would mean more technological assistance, funding, labor strikes, and what have you. And it has happened before. Yeah. Uh, case in point, solidarity movement in Poland, for instance, uh, at the end of the Cold War. So, so Reza, what does the average Iranian uh, in Tehran as they look at what the, you know, the regime is doing, what are they thinking? Well, they're, they're thinking that for 44 years, we've been primarily occupied by a, 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 a group of people who are, who are ideologically not at all interested in the livelihood of our own citizens. They're only interested in exporting an ideology beyond our borders and create a modern-day Shiite caliphate uh, to dominate the region and the rest of the world. Uh, they are uh, conducting all these campaigns, they are funding all of these uh, um, uh, proxies right. at the expense uh, of the Iranian people themselves. So Iranians want liberty, Iranians want freedom, Iranians share the very same values of citizens in democratic country, whether it's the, the West and other countries in the world, uh, because we believe in human rights, we believe in equality, we believe in putting an end to any kind of discrimination, whether of, uh, for ideological reasons right. or religious reasons or sexual orientation, something totally different than what the, this regime uh, represents. It does not represent the will and, and the opinions uh, of, of my fellow compatriots. Yeah. Well, but when you look at the regime with these proxy forces firing stuff off at us, do they want a war with the United States? Because we know who's, who's putting those weapons in their hands. I mean, look... Uh, the regime in Iran has tried to sabotage what could have led to legitimate peace in the region. The forces of uh, evil that are fighting uh, via terror, 
whether it's conducted against our own people or uh, Israel or uh, other nations in the region, they are not committed to peace. They do not want peace. And the only way to have peace is to allow for a two-state solution. But that will only occur at the time that these proxies and everybody who's trying to sabotage the pe peace right. process are no longer there. So you have to eliminate the problem once and for all. Right. You can kill soldiers and Hamases and uh, uh, al-Qaeda's of this world, but you cannot kill an ideology. You have to ultimately defeat that ideology that breeds such kind of uh, conduct and comportment by some. Indeed. He is the exiled crown prince of Iran. Uh, Reza Pahlavi, sir, thank you very much. A real pleasure talking to you today. Thanks for having me. You bet. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.